Hello, it's Lou Collins. Today I've got another SVG file for you and we're still looking at Christmas decor. So this file is available for you to download on Craft World. It will be linked within this post. Um, and there's been lots of elements that we've already created using files from that download. So we've done some little houses, we've done uh, an entire wreath, we've done a cracker as well. Uh, I'm going to be using the garland file. So it's some leaves and some beautiful spiral florals as well. But rather than creating a garland, I'm going to create a card with it instead. So I've cut everything on my electronic cutting machine. So I've done one of everything and then I've also repeated the leaves from plain white cardstock as well. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to keep all of these elements kind of in teals, um, aquas, those sorts of colours and lots of white as well. I want to make sure the white elements stand out from the card. So I'm going to use a similar sort of colour um, distress spray so this is the spray stain and this is in speckled egg now I've got myself I believe it's seven by seven uh, eight by eight card base there a little larger than I thought but um, it's nice to do a big wreath on a big card and I'm just going to do a, first of all a light spritzing of this just all over the card and then I'm also going to take the nozzle off and flick some too because I quite like the larger dots that you don't tend to get when you do the um, the spritzing with the bottle there so just tapping the end and adding some distressing just to the back there now you're going to want to allow that to dry before you do anything more you can use a heat tool or you can just set it aside while maybe you do the cutting of the SVG file so once your ink is dry, you want to start working on your flowers and your leaves, or you can do this while it's drying. So for the flowers, I'm using quite a strong cardstock here, and I'm going to pinch with a pair of tweezers. This makes it a lot easier. So from the outside edge onto the end of the spiral, I'm just going to pinch that, grip it really tight, and start curling. And you're just going to start curling all the way around, following the pattern of the flower so don't worry if it starts folding rather than curling that's fine because you once you've got the curve you can start to straighten out some of those folds and what you'll find is when you get to the end you'll have this circle this disc and that's basically what you're going to use just here look that's what you're going to use to glue the base of your florals down so then I'm going to release my tweezers and I'm going to release it all I'm just going to let it all open up a little bit and allow that to kind of fall into a nice shape and this is where I can just start squeezing pinching and kind of just manipulating it until I'm happy with the size of it the looser that you curve this the larger your flower is going to be the tighter the smaller so then I'm going to take, um, I can either take a wet glue or I can take a hot glue. I find hot glue is much easier. And just apply a blob of glue to that disc at the end and squeeze the flower. So just take my hot glue. And just press the inside of the flower onto that, just for a second, minding your fingers, of course. And once that's dry, you'll have yourself a three-dimensional flower. Pop that to the side and repeat that for the rest of the spirals. So now my flowers are done and I'm just leaving the glue to cool on those fully. Uh, I'm going to start looking at my leaves. Now my leaves, um, I've got these in quite bright colours, so they're going to stand out. But I do want to fade them in ever so slightly. So I'm going to take a little... Of this this is from Sizzix it's the pearlescent medium so it's got a decent opacity to it and it's got this kind of pearly effect as well I'm just going to take a palette knife and I'm going to take a little of this onto my palette knife not a lot and onto a blending mat as well just going to scrape over kind of just the edges of some of these leaves so just picking it up. So you can see you've got a little bit of translucency on these, but not too much. And that's just muting down that colour a little bit, adding a little bit of distressing to it as well. And just brush it on, brush it off, keep adding it as you wish, like so. So I'm just going to do that to all four of these leaves as well, to make sure these are all matching. 
So once your leaves are dry or almost dry, you want to do kind of what I call, what I call a dry run as such with your leaves. So these have score lines already added into them so we can scrunch them and fold them a little. And you want to imagine a circle just around the uh, centre of the card there and you're going to place, you can place four of these leaves, the white leaves, kind of in that circle shape. And then do the same with these green ones. These are kind of still drying, but I want these all in the same direction. This is going to create the base for my wreath. So just slotting these in the gaps. You can draw a circle on if you like. And what I'm doing is tucking the ends in, so the stems of the leaves in. Like I say, this is just a dry run, just so you can be sure you're happy with your positioning and that it all looks okay. Last green leaf under there okay and then where will your flowers go so you kind of want to space these out as well probably if you've got any that are smaller they would want to go towards the top rather than the bottom then we're going to slot we've only got four of these um, deeper darker color leaves here so you probably want to just space those round a little bit like so. I do like that dark green colour, that's gorgeous. And lastly I've then got the white leaves so these ones are just going to be for extra uh, dimension, for extra texture as well. So again four of these, I'll probably try and put these so that they're coming out from the uh, under the green leaves, the, the larger green acorn type leaves. And Let's move that one along and have that one there. There we go. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I'm happy with how that looks. I'm happy with the shape of it. Much happier once it's all uh, glued down, but I think I'm, I'm glad that we've got enough there. So lastly, all I'm going to do is take a craft tag and I'm going to just mix in a little bit of craft with this. You can mix in something like a black, for example, so this is just going to be a little tag. I'm going to stamp a small Christmas um, sentiment on it, even just the word love or something like that. Uh, some twine in there and just glue that down somewhere. Could even go right in the center. We'll have a look at how that looks. So the next stage is to glue all of these pieces down in the way I've just decided. So if you bring your elements out to the side, then you know whereabouts you were placing them. There we go, so I've just added that tag. As I said, I've got, I found the word make a wish to stamp onto it. That was an old um, Stampers Anonymous stamp, but you can use whatever you have in your stash. So there's a pretty frosty festive card that can of course be adapted to be an autumn card with different colors, a spring-like card as well. So go and find the SVGs on Craft World. There's lots for you to download and purchase there. Uh, and we'd love to see what you make using this file in the Inspiration Gallery.